In this video, we're going to show you two different ways to connect an audio mixer to a DSLR style video camera. Everything that we show you in this video would also work well with a point and shoot style video camera as long as it has some type of an eighth inch microphone input. Everything that we show you in this video will work for you. If you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that we use in this video, we do have links down in the description below, not only for the equipment that we're using in this video, but also some other maybe upgraded options as we'll discuss throughout this video. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty of connecting and testing everything here, we do need to cover a little bit of theory. The first piece of theory that we need to cover is the difference between a balanced and unbalanced cable. You can see here that I have two quarter inch jacks in my hand. One has a single black line on it, so it has a tip section and a sleeve section. This is known as a tip sleeve or TS or unbalanced quarter inch cable. You don't want to use a cable with these jacks for runs longer than 15 feet. If you do, you will get noise and interference and static and you will have degraded audio quality. Next, we have a balanced quarter inch jack. You can see there's three sections. There's the tip, the ring, and the sleeve. Balanced audio cable, such as a balanced quarter inch jack here or an XLR cable, can go up to a thousand feet with very minimal noise. It's a much more efficient way of transporting your sound over a long distance. So when we're discussing some of the methods in this video, you do want to be thinking about whether or not your video camera that you're connecting to your audio mixer is a long ways away. This comes up quite a bit if you're trying to do something like record a band or record a live event. Your video camera is not always close to your audio mixer. So in that case, you'll want the first solution that we're going to show you in this video, which is a balanced audio solution. The second solution that we're going to show you, which is a little bit of a workaround, will be unbalanced. It'll still work for you. There are a couple workarounds that we're going to go through, but it's much shorter distance, only if your camera is really close to your audio mixer. The next thing that I do want to cover is when we're talking about the audio input on your DSLR video camera, it's important to know that this is a mic level input. Audio mixers have a line level output. The audio output from an audio mixer is many orders of magnitude louder or more powerful or stronger than what your video camera is expecting. So the first method that we're going to show you will address this. The second method we're going to show you how to work around and kind of adjust your audio mixers settings in order to play nicer with the mic level input that's on your video camera. The other thing that we should be talking about here is how you want to take your audio out of your audio mixer. The way I see it, there's three common ways to take the audio out of your audio mixer. The first is to use your aux output. The advantages of using your auxiliary output of your audio mixer is that you can create a custom mix for your live stream. This would work really good if you're doing a live event that requires live music, but maybe you don't have the broadcast rights for that music. So it allows you to mute a couple channels while still giving a custom mix into your live stream. And it gives you a bit more flexibility with what actually shows up on your video camera or live stream or recording or whatever you're working with. Now, the second most common way to pull audio out of your audio mixer here is by using the monitor outputs. The monitor outputs will, in most audio mixers, give you a copy of the main mix, but it gives you your own level knob. This allows you to fine tune the output level of your audio mixer a little bit more. It gives you a little bit more control over the sound going to your camera without interfering with what's coming out of your main speakers at your event. If you're just running your audio mixer to your video camera, that's not much of a concern. This mostly applies to hybrid events. The last main way that you can pull audio out is by using the stereo output of your audio mixer. This will give you the full mix. I would recommend doing this if your only purpose of the audio mixer is to feed your video camera for a recording or a live stream or something like that. Then of course you could definitely use the stereo mix. I would not pull a copy of the stereo mix to your video camera if you're in any type of a hybrid type event situation where you're also running live sound off the same audio mixer. You're setting yourself up and you're putting yourself into a corner where you have one master volume that controls your main speakers and the feed to the camera that can get a little bit messy and you'll end up with a compromised result uh, depending on what you're working on.
Okay, so let's talk about the signal chain for this audio mixer before we try to even connect it to the camera. We want to make sure that our foundation is set up correctly so we make sure that we have a good signal. The EVRE20 here is connected to channel 1. The gain is set to about 75%. The level is set to 0 or unity at that triangle position. And the main stereo output here is set to 0 or unity at the triangle position. You can see here when I'm speaking into the microphone that I am peaking right at 0 dB, just short of 0 dB without going over. This is set up exactly perfectly. This is how I recommend setting up a microphone with an audio mixer like this one. So the first option to connect this audio mixer to your video camera is to use a small audio interface like this one that is built exactly for this purpose. If we take a look at this device, we can see that we have two XLR inputs on it. And on the side of the device here, we have a whole variety of controls. The big thing that I want to touch on here is, as we spoke about earlier, the output of this audio mixer is going to be coming at line level. On the inputs of this small audio interface for your video camera, you can let it know that you're sending it a line level signal, and that will automatically gain stage everything so it's more appropriate for your camera. So I would connect this to your video camera. And now let's look at some of the other connectivity options when it comes to connecting this unit to your audio mixer. So the first way that you can do it is probably the most obvious. You can pull a copy of the main XLR outputs from the audio mixer. So put the green into the left output and the red into the right output. And then we'll connect those to the inputs of this audio interface here. So we'll connect the red one to the right. Red is always right if you are using a red cable. And then we'll grab the green cable here. And the green cable we're going to plug into the left input. Now we're going to open up the audio settings on this camera here. Go into audio recording level. When you set up your recording level on your DSLR video camera, you want to set the, it to the lowest possible setting. The preamps are no good on these small DSLR video cameras. You don't want to be up around level 15 or 20 or anything like that. You'll notice that you get a great amount of hiss and static and you'll have bad quality in your audio. So let's turn this camera all the way back down to one to make sure that it's turned on. Then we can grab our audio interface here and as I'm speaking into the microphone, I'm gonna turn it up. I'm gonna turn it up to about 50%. Now you can see here that I'm coming in at about minus 10. I want my peak to be hitting the video camera at about minus six. I don't want to be getting close to that minus three mark that you see there. Check one, two. So you can see that this is good. You can hear it now as well. I do want to show you just for the sake of making the video complete, what happens if you turn up this feed too much. So I'm going to turn up all the way. If you get up past plus three here, I'm going to turn up some of these other options, you will notice that it does get a little gainy and distorted. We'll show you in some of the other options as we play with the audio mixer to the camera that this is really bad. You do want to keep this level somewhere down around minus what you would guess to be minus six. That's your peak level. That gives you headroom so if something loud happens, you don't get that clipped or distorted sound. Now, what happens if you don't want to use the main stereo mix. You can use a cable like this. This is a balanced quarter inch jack here, and that will convert it to a balanced XLR cable. Now, as I said before, with a balanced solution, you can use any of these options that I've showed you so far to run up to 100 feet. Just get a longer XLR cable. I always prefer to buy small six inch or one foot versions of this adapter cable and then I use XLR cable for my long runs if you do have to run out to a camera. So I'm going to plug this now into my monitor output and then move these XLR cables over. So the green one is now connected to the left monitor output. You connect this adapter jack to the right monitor output and connect the red XLR cable to that. Great. So now if we look at the video camera, you'll see that there's no sound, and that's because we don't have our main monitor output on the audio mixer turned up. So I'm going to turn that up to about 
Now you can see here that we're getting a nice healthy level into the video camera. You can hear it now. It should sound nice, warm, and clean like the EVRE20 is known for. And this is exactly what you want. Now the benefits of this over connecting to the stereo outputs is that your audio tech gets volume control is over this, what he's sending to the video camera. And the camera operator also has the ability to fine tune that audio if he notices it needs to be turned down or turned up a little bit more for his recording preferences. Now, as mentioned before, there is a third option. So I'm gonna get rid of this red cable that's connected to the right jack. I'm gonna get rid of this completely. And we can take this quarter inch jack here and connect it to our aux output. This allows us, if we need to, we can have this whole solution connected to our aux output where we can give it a, a separate mix. So you can see here, the one downside with this, if we're looking at the video camera's input audio there, is that it is coming in mono. It's only taking up one of the two input channels on the video camera. If you are using a small audio interface like this one, most of them allow you to mono merge. So I can flip this switch here and now you can see that the audio is coming into both channel one and two on the video camera. That really does show you the versatility of a small box like this. This one here that I'm using in this video is probably about 10 years old. I've probably used it 500 to 1,000 times. Honestly, I've used this thing a ton, it gets beat up. There's a newer version I'm gonna link down in the description below, but there are also a much more modern approach to these types of things where they can record on board. So you can record to an SD card or a hard drive on this device itself and still send a redundant audio feed to your video camera. I'm gonna link to some of those just to show you what's possible in terms of different audio interfaces that are built specifically for DSLR or small video cameras like point and shoot video cameras if you do need to connect them to a bunch of crazy outboard gear like this. Now the next option that I'm gonna show you to connect your audio mixer to your video camera is a little bit less expensive. You'll save a little bit of money, but it does need to be worked around a little bit. Basically what this cable does here is it will take the stereo outputs from your audio mixer it basically has a left and right mono input and it will merge that into a single stereo input. So this is basically a cable version of the audio interface we just showed you, but it gives you a whole lot less control, although it does technically work. We're gonna show you how to connect all of this now, and I'm gonna show you some of the workarounds that you may need to do in order to make this work properly. So just like the previous example, we're gonna connect this to the main stereo output first. Then I'm gonna connect the other jack to the camera. I'm gonna open up the audio recording level. Now right off the bat, you can see that the signal is quite hot. If you're listening to this microphone right now, you will notice that it's probably clipping and a little bit distorted. So you will have to reduce the main stereo output here. I'm gonna keep bringing it down, down, down. So you can see here, I went from being at 75% to about 30%, and it's still a little bit too hot for me. So you, this does take quite a bit of working. So you can see if you're in a hybrid event, if you are working with this audio mixer in a live sound environment and then kicking a feed out to your video camera, this would be untenable having the main stereo output set to about 10%. That would not work well, wouldn't sound good or anything like that. So what happens if we connect this to the main monitor output? I'm gonna put the stereo output back up to where it was, unplug these jacks and plug them to the monitor output. Now this would be a viable solution. I'm gonna turn up the monitor output here, and you can see again, I'm at that kind of five or 10% level on this monitor output knob. This will work for you. My only issue with this particular setup is that this monitor knob is extremely sensitive when you're trying to operate it between that zero and one out of 10 mark. So it takes a really fine uh, kind of moving of the knob there to get it dialed in correctly. If you bump the table or something like that, chances are that your audio setting is gonna move around on you a little bit, so that's not ideal. Now another downside of using a cable like this is it's not as good with your auxiliary outputs on your audio mixer. I'm gonna take the red jack out, I'm gonna put the black jack to the effects end. And you can see here, again, it's clipping and distorting there. It's really sensitive on the mix here. 
Now, some audio mixers will have a main output for your auxiliary jack. That's probably what I would do. I'd use all these as normal and then choke it down with your main output. Because you can see here, if you're trying to create a custom mix, all the volume knobs here are so sensitive uh, that it may be kind of frustrating to work with. But this would get you a mono one channel signal into the video camera. With this setup like this, there's no way to get a stereo two channel signal into the video camera if you're using the aux output. You'll only be able to fill one of those channels on the video camera. Chances are if you're taking this to post editing or something like that, that's not a big deal. You can easily double that up so you get a stereo signal out of it. But it is worth noting that with this solution, you can only get one channel to the video camera. So if we're comparing both of these options in terms of which is better to connect your audio mixer to your video camera, an audio interface will allow you to work with balanced cable. You can get longer cable runs. It gives the camera operator more control. You get a lot of helpful switches here to adjust to line level signal coming from the audio mixer. The, uh, the video camera op can fine tune some of these levels. It works a lot better in a lot more situations with a lot higher quality. That being said, this other solution by using a dual quarter inch to stereo eighth inch jack input, it does work and it is workable if your audio mixer is close to your camera. If you're a live streamer or something like that, you just want to send a backup feed to your video camera, which is quite common. That's what I do oftentimes as well. Then that, that would work for you as well and you'll save a couple bucks. If you're in this for the long run, if you're any type of a professional, I say just invest the extra couple dollars. It's really not that much more expensive. We have some links down in the description below to go with a proper audio interface for your camera. It'll give you a lot more tools and over the long run, it'll give you a lot more professional result. If you have any questions about anything that we covered in this video, please do check out the links down in the description below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.